When putting together a game based on realism, it can be all too easy to slip into being needlessly complex for the sake of it. Throw in some clunky inventory management, tiny text, and using a controller when it was clearly only designed with a mouse and keyboard in mind, and we've got a game that seems specifically designed to piss me off. Armory Forger is maybe the biggest example of this type of game I've played for a while, but I still keep playing it. If you are like me, and know basically nothing about the armor games aside from them being the basis for the DayZ mod, here's the basic gist from what I understand. A normal match involves potentially hours of moving across a large map, battling for key strategic points, and holding onto them long enough for victory. To do that, you'll be coordinating attacks, running supplies, and lots and lots of walking. Slow paced isn't a dull enough description for it. That's sort of the point then. Winning in armor isn't just about pulling off enough headshots and filling up a scoreboard. It takes patience and the understanding that, while you may not be the big heroic soldier storming the enemy front lines, your simple contribution of transporting ally combatants is going to be vital to the ongoing war effort. It's the type of roleplay that most games are too afraid to commit to so heavily. In an industry where everything strives to be immediate and consistently hitting the dopamine button, armor relishes the slog that fighting a real battle would feel like. The inch by inch gameplay and need for cohesion of tactics does so much to making your fellow soldiers feel like true allies. Unlike Call of Duty, where another team player just presents an opportunity for somebody else to steal your kills, finding teammates in armor feels just as comforting as it is necessary. It's also 90% of what makes the game fun. If I played on my own, I think I would have had a terrible, terrible time. But the goofy interactions between passing allies or the camaraderie of taking a road trip to the next enemy camp stop the mundane aspects of the gameplay becoming unbearable and actually start to make them kind of fun. In many games, not having yourself or your squad members clearly marked on the map could be tiring, but in armor, there's something so weirdly engrossing about the simple act of trying to drive while a friend in the passenger seat uses a map and compass to navigate. Either they're good at it and the immersion becomes unparalleled, or they're utter shit and you get lost, run out of fuel, and have to hike all the way back to a petrol station while telling your friend you hate him and he has to sit in the back of the jeep from now on. Hey, you, you're finally awake. Those experiences aren't unique to armor. I've had plenty of similar interactions with other players in games like DayZ or Sea of Thieves, but those can be few and far between. Armor seems designed to primarily focus those interactions to the forefront. My fondest memories of the game don't involve shootouts. Instead, they involve threatening to pull the pin out of my grenade if my co-pilot doesn't stop pissing around with the interior cockpit light. <laughs> It's not all hunky-dory fun times, though. Like I said up top, the game clearly didn't put much thought into translating controls onto controllers, which leads to non-stop frustration as you have to hold down the start button along with what other button to complete a basic action. Because apparently, the D-pad is overrated all of a sudden. It shares the same issues with countless other games ported over from PC, but at this point, I really think devs should have figured out how to give a shit about simple control schemes. It's really not that complex. Even just some cohesion on which combinations do what would be nice. That said, that is really my only one major gripe. The sense of progression that working up the map gives, coupled with the basic base building, is unlike any other game, which could either be great or fucking awful depending on what you want out of a video game. Across the in-game radio, you can constantly hear other people taking the game way too seriously, but you can also tell they're having a great time doing it. 
I'll never be one of those people. I don't know whether that's because I'm too impatient or too stupid, but either way, I'm just not capable. So the fact that I found myself having a fantastic time has to mean Armour's doing something right. The fact that the most fun I had with it wasn't taking part in big battles or daring escapes, but doing busy work activities that minorly supported the war effort is phenomenal for a video game. If you're like I was and think Armour looks a bit too hardcore to fully enjoy, you are 100% right. But with a couple of friends, this is maybe the most fun being consistently confused I have ever had. So yeah, for the average player looking for a new shooter, armor is an awful choice. Bad choice, bad. No, get down, bad. But for someone willing to waste several hours with some good friends that are either prepared to learn or happy to run around like idiots, it's worth the mild irritation just as soon as you know someone who knows how to navigate and isn't going to friendly fire random allies for the fun of it. Fuel is now available from Point Hawaii. Out. Thanks for checking out the video. Have you played any of the armor games? Are you looking to check them out? Are you one of those people that gets way too into them? And is that fun for you? Let us know whatever you wanna let us know in the comments. And if you wanted to support the channel even further, feel free to click that like button or even subscribe. And then if you wanted to support us even, even further, we have a Patreon. The link is in the description. We don't lock off any content there, but anything you're willing to give, we really, really, really deeply appreciate. But we also understand times be tough. And honestly, I just appreciate you getting this far in the video. Thank you again for watching and cheers.